Good day, viewers. After the February 25th, 2023 general election, when the court proceedings to challenge the outcome of the election begins, Nigerians become familiar with the issues that Bonda Ahmed Tinumbu had in the United States of America, especially when it comes to the issue of narcotic trafficking when he forfeited the sum of 460,000 US dollars to the government. So, so many people are familiar with these stories, but nobody is is asking the right question like why did it happen or how did it happen how do they cut him so i saw an interesting video that explains so many things about bonda ametin but it might interest you to listen to this video to the end create demand and consumption when Tinubu said he was going to create demand and consumption many nigerians laughed at him we all believed that was a blunder but Tinubu knew exactly what he was talking about on October 11, 1990, federal agents from the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, also known as the DEA, moved strategically in group to a particular home address. And the plan here was to execute a basic search of the property. But the whole operations quickly turned out to be a battleground because the owner of the residence did everything in his power to prevent the officers from moving into the property and conducting a basic search. The owner of the residence, who was adamant in opening his door for the officers to come in and check his property, fired three shots at the DEA officers. The officers quickly took covers to avoid being hit by bullets and they called for backup. When backup and various forms of assistance arrived, the owner of the residence was overpowered. Surprisingly, the man who was arrested by the DEA agent wasn't Tinubu, but a man named Lee Andrew Edwards. When this man's property was searched, the agent saw a lot of drugs and narcotics in the residence of Lee Andrew Edwards. This man was arrested and sentenced to life in prison. And this was the beginning of many tales and drama linked with various drugs cartel in Chicago at that point in time. The investigators managed to unravel all of his links and connections in his business. Federal agents noticed that Lee Andrew Edwards was into buying and selling of contraband products, including narcotics, which came from a drug dealer in Chicago named Abiodun Agbele. I know you watching this video from the comfort of your home is waiting to hear a particular name, but relax, we'll come to that in a second. Abiodun Nagbele was a major importer of drugs in Chicago at that point in time. He was well known for his business and he had a lot of clients purchasing items from him. When Abiodun Nagbele was arrested, he knew he had no other option but to work with the feds to give the necessary information to give them all of his clients, the way they work, the boss, the person who controls the whole business and the market strategy. Abiodun walked to the feds because he had no other option and because he was looking for a lighter sentence. And as part of a plea deal, he revealed everything he knew about the narcotics trade in Chicago at that time. Investigators noticed that a lot of Nigerians were heavily involved in the wholesale distribution of narcotics in a particular location in Chicago. A lot of Nigerians trooped in into the part of Chicago to do their business because they had a link. They had a connect who supplied them with wholesale price for narcotics in Chicago. So a lot of Nigerians trooped in into that part of the country to execute their trade and stay off the radar of the feds and the DEA. Abiodun Agbele, while in the Fred's custody, gave out names of top Nigerian wholesalers in the trade. He also called out his uncle named Adeboyega Moise Akonde. If you know Nigeria's history very well, this name Adeboyega Moise Akonde popped out in various events in Nigeria. Now, let's get to the very, very interesting part of this whole tale. While all of these events were unfolding, a mind-boggling and mind-blowing event popped out from the background. An accountant living in Chicago who worked for Mobile Oil in Nigeria with a declared monthly income of 2,400 US dollars made a shocking deposit of over $1.4 million into his bank accounts. The record keepers at that bank were flabbergasted and astonished to see a man who earns 2,400 US dollars and no other known source of income make a huge deposit of over 1.4 million US dollars in cash. The bookkeepers in that bank did a quick research to see if this man had other source of income that he did not make mention while filling up the bank details. Well, if you're familiar with drug business, drug lords always acquire the services of an accountant to help them clean, to help them launder, and to help them move money and cash swiftly without the feds noticing. Accountants in drug business help keep all the books in check. 
and this Nigerian accountant worked for Akonde, helping him with all the paperwork involved with the business. Finally, in 1992, the US federal investigators added this accountant to their radar, monitoring all his move, bank transactions, his credits and debits. And the feds were also astonished to notice that this same accountant ran for a political position in Lagos State. He wanted to become the senator in Lagos. Fast forward to the interesting part, a document which was once teased and rumored tells us what we need to know about this accountant. This document which was obtained from the US District Court contains damaging information that this accountant named Bola Akme Tunubu for the past 30 years have been trying to compress. This document contains a well-documented case files of a federal case of July 1993 containing clear evidence that Tinubu was once a bad man, handling and laundering proceeds of narcotic traffic trade. It all began in December 1989. Akonde took Tinubu to a First Heritage Bank to open an individual money account. On the application, Tinubu gave his home address as 7504 South Stewart Avenue, Chicago, which is the same address Akonde used as his narcotic trap house. Special agent at that time also noticed that Oluremi opened a joint account with Audrey Akonde, the wife of Ade Boyega, Moise Akonde. On January 4th, 1990, just four days after opening the account, Tinubu deposited over 80,000 US dollars in cash. If you remember vividly, Tinubu claimed that he worked for Mobile Oil Nigeria with a monthly salary of 2,400 US dollars. So how did this man make over 80,000 US dollars in just a short period of time? And also remember, this man had no other known source of income at that point in time. So it was shocking to see that a man who earned 2,400 US dollars could raise 80,000 US dollars in cash in a short period of time. Bank records from First Heritage Bank shows that over the course of 1990 alone, Tinubu made a total of 1.8 million US dollars into his bank account. On January 10, 1992, a court order was obtained to freeze some of Tinubu's bank account containing suspected proceeds of narcotics in excess of over 1.4 million US dollars. After Tinubu's account was placed on red alert, Tinubu told the Fed that the large amount of US dollars belongs to one Kafari Tinubu and his surrogate mother and the person of Alhaja, Habibat Mogaji. In September 15, 1993, Tinubu entered into an agreement with the US state government by agreeing to forfeit over 460,000 US dollars from his proceeds from narcotics trade in the United States. A balance of 1 million US dollars was released to Bola Ahmed Tinubu. If you think that's the end, no, you're wrong. We still have interest interesting details to share with you regarding this narcotic blockchain in Chicago, USA. In the face of the public, this was the end of the story. But no, it's just the beginning. We will continue the story and expose everything you need to know, so do well to subscribe and stay tuned. The continuation will be posted probably tomorrow by 7.30 p.m. Nigerian time, being the 1st of October, so do well to subscribe and stay tuned. Tinubu is also facing fresh forms of disqualification which came about from his forged certificate from Chicago State University and we did an apt interrogation to get every single detail from his Chicago State University and from his document presented and our findings will blow your mind.